Go ahead and just take it up, guys. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ain't God good? <laughs> hey, I just want to praise him. I just want to glorify him. Hallelujah for showing up this morning. We th thank God for the service that we had in the name of Jesus. And we thank God for the service that we're going to have tonight. Bless the Lord. Now understand something. It's good to have the presence of the Lord overshadow us and have powerful services like this. But you would need the word of God as well right along with it. Are you hearing me, child of God? To be anchored and steadfast in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God forevermore. The word's what's going to keep you. That's what's going to keep you steadfast. That's what's going to keep you anchored, especially in this day and age. Can I tell you something? Look at me. There's coming a shake into this nation. And understand me, the, the church better be on top with God. Because ev the Bible says everything's going to be shaken. That means the church world as well. And only those that are founded upon the gospel of Jesus Christ will remain. Are you hearing me? It's not a weekend warrior or a feel-good Christian. Hear me. Bless the Lord. Anybody can shout when the presence of God is very thick and, and very heavy. Anybody can shout. Anybody can muster up a dance or a spring or jump or what have you. Hear me, child of God. But what about if, there's, if, if you don't sense that? Hallelujah. What about when you're going through the fires or through the flames? Hear me. Bless the Lord. That's the time to do it in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for everyone that come out tonight. Bless the Lord. We should be more here tonight, but bless God. Only God knows in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But we can still have church where two or three are gathered in my, uh, gather in my name. There am I in the midst in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Somebody have a testimony tonight. Bless the Lord. You just want to praise God and give God thanksgivings and rejoicings. Go ahead, Judy. <laughs> Yes, and it's know, awesome. Hallelujah. And because the more he saves, like my mom and one of my sisters, she's the only one to get on with my sisters, you know. She can talk to her and God will work on it. We're just praying. <laughs> but I thank God because I just see a big move. And yesterday I seen an old, old pastor of mine, which is, has a front church. And I seen him at a wedding, and he did that wedding. And I was so tickled, so I had to testify to him. And his name is Terry Hawkins, and I said, I'm, I'm going back to church. My family's in there. My mom just got back in. He goes, well, thank God where you go to church at. He, you can see the fear on him. Yeah. And I said, over in Scott, I said, do you know Terry Martin? He's like, yeah, I know Terry Martin. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just see the fear in his face. And I said, well, praise God, that church is on fire for God. Hallelujah. And I went to his wife, and she's like, oh, I don't know. No, where is this at again? But I want to thank God because I pray on that church, and I have family members in there. And I'm just praying that God will move them or stir that pastor back up what he used to be. Hallelujah. Amen. God. Bless God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Glory to the Lord. That's awesome. Powerful. You can't tell me God don't move upon families because there's living proof right there in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And all the families that we're praying for here, bless the Lord, Sharon and Mary, the families that you've been praying for for the many years and the others as well. Bless God. I believe this is the year of Jubilee for them. I certainly believe it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The move is on. The convicting power of the Spirit of God is on. But bless God, let us be bold in our witness before the Lord. Amen. Let's not be timid or shy. Praise God. God has saved us. Tell somebody that God has saved you. Tell somebody how good God is. We just got done singing that song. He is so good to me. Well, if he's good to you, go tell somebody how good he is. Amen. Glory to God. What's your, I didn't get your name. What's your name? Brenda. What is it, Brenda? Okay. Yep. I got 
got up, went and did something in the kitchen. I went back and watched another one. <laughs> well, Tuesday, maybe at night, Tuesday, I was watching more of them. I'm probably going to six or seven. And Wednesday, I just couldn't take it no more. I, I was sort of following him. Oh, come on, Jesus. Oh, come on, Lord. Those videos, they got me, so they're going to get me. Bless God. Oh, Hallelujah. That's why the devil don't like them. And to see my daughter and five of my grandkids, that there's a hand raised, praise God. And there's more to come. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That is awesome. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You know what? Some, a lot of times you don't get much comments on those, on those videos, but people are watching those videos and they're afraid to put a comment on there. Are you hearing me? Because they're afraid to be associated with Harvest Field. But can I tell you something? Hear me. Hallelujah. I've been praying God use those videos to touch people's hearts. Wherever they're hurting, hallelujah, hallelujah, that somehow in some way they come across those videos, whether they're overseas, whether they're here in the United States of America, or whether in this area of Scott, Ohio, let them come across those videos and let them see the glory and the power of God and let the conviction power of God move through those to where people get the, give their hearts and lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, to the Lamb. I'm thankful that you said that, sis, because sometimes I get discouraged and say, what's the use of even putting those things on there? You know, it's, and I know it's a lot of work for Chrissy to put those things on there. And uh, I, I think to myself, you know, maybe we should just discontinue them. But can I tell you something? I can't discontinue them in the name of the Lord yeah. Jesus because there's somebody out there like Brenda that's watching those things, hallelujah, that just could give their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you would. <laughs> Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And I realize, listen, uh, you know, I'm a straightforward preacher. I've always been a straightforward preacher. And I've never twisted, listen, never twisted my message. I've never turned my message ever since the time I've started in ministry up to now. I've just, I've stayed the same as preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And we intend to stay the same until Jesus comes back in the name of the Lord, and still see whole families birth to the kingdom of God for such a time as this, in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Wasn't that awesome this morning to hear those kids give their testimonies in the name of Jesus? Awesome, awesome, awesome. We just thank the Lord in the name of Jesus. Anybody else tonight? Bless the Lord. Got a testimony that you want to share with the people? Bless God. If not, we're going to get into the word tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Chrissy. Right. So I share those videos and I think, well, someone might look at them, they might not. But that just touches my heart. And whenever I first got saved, I testified about um, we were supposed to be getting a new home. Well, it was in the works and we were ta- they were talking about it. And, uh, you know, I, I had hope, but every time something always falls through. Well, today they're building walls. And I went out there and I just, I about, I about lost it because I just, it, we're, we're getting a new home. Amen. Not at all. There's, I would never in a million years, I thought for sure God would come back and we would never, we would be where we're at today. So that is one of the biggest blessings that has come out of this year. God just give you a hand for one purpose, Mr. Chrissy. Bless the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. Glory to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jeff, go ahead, brother. Yeah. I spoke volumes to each and every one of us that sat in, in, in our seats today because it is our turn. I believe so. I mean, we've invested in people, but it's time for us to draw closer and closer to Him. Amen. Get too close until we go to glory. That's right. What a powerful word it was today. Yep. I, Amen. I believe that that's what the Lord's looking for: those whose hearts are open and ready for Hallelujah. the Lord to minister, not any, in, not only into them, yep. but they can take it. Out to the world. Amen. Not sure time. It's your time to draw those exactly. You know, that's the, that's the thing of it is, you don't know the situation of some person that, that might be just like in Brenda's state. You know, the devil's been telling her just end it all. That'd be the best thing to ever happen. But you, you had enough word in you that know that not to do such a thing. But there's others that don't have that. 
Hallelujah. And they need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. You could just be that person, that one person, to speak a word in due season to turn them totally and completely around. I've seen it not only once in this church, but many times in this church, a word spoken in due season where people have you know, ready to commit suicide, and now they're, they're you know, that they, they've given their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ and turned the whole thing around in their, their lives in the name of the Lord. Many of these young kids that, you know, uh, they have no hope for the future. But, man, I'm telling you what, if God could just get a hold of their hearts and, and, and fill them with the Holy Ghost, bless the Lord, can they ever make a difference in spreading the gospel to, their, to the young people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Bless the Lord. Anybody else tonight? Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you tonight a little bit in the area of the spirit of praise that accompanies salvation. And let me say this. <clears throat> let me say this. Hallelujah. When a person genuinely gets saved, and everybody say genuinely. One more time. What does that mean? That's for real. How many, has ever, how many can tell the difference from... From imitation leather or real leather? How do, you, how do you tell the difference? I just smell it. I can tell by the smell. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? The Lord's got a sweet aroma about him. Hallelujah. And that sweet aroma, when a person gets saved, it comes out of them through worship and praise unto the Lord. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. With thanksgivings and rejoicings and glorifications unto him. How many recall back when you first got saved after you had known uh, that your sins are forgiven? Your sins have been thrown in the sea of forgetfulness. Bless the Lord. Automatically, what come out of your mouth was, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And from that time forward, something happened on the inside of you to where you begin to thank him in all areas of life. You say, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Chris is just saying, I thank God for opening this area up for a house that she got. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Brenda's thanking God for the salvation that she has. Uh, uh, automatically, there's a, a, a praise that accompanies salvation. You start begin to thank God instead of cursing God anymore. Can I tell you something? Hear me. Bless the Lord. As you begin to thank God, you stop and think a little bit. You, you know, you never did that before you was ever saved. Before you was ever saved, there was a different spirit about you. But now that you're saved, hallelujah, there's praise and thanksgiving starts coming out of this innermost being of yours. Am I right? Hallelujah to the Lamb. And understand something. It's not something that you've got to conjure up, but automatically it just starts flowing out of you. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. It's the very same spirit that moved upon the children when Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem where they sang out, or they sung out, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And can I tell you something? The religious world got mad because these kids were worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Glory. Are you hearing me? And Jesus knows how to steal the boo birds. And somebody said, Amen. Hallelujah. He said, Haven't you read in Scripture that out of the mouth of babes and sucklings I have ordained my praise? Can I tell you something? Kids can literally worship and praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I, I love to watch some of these little ones worshiping the Lord because they're true and honest in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's why I wanted them to pray for, for little Brooklyn in the name of the Lord. You can't get any cleaner than what these young ones are. Hear me. Bless the Lord and, and, and the faith level that they have. We're expecting something good, mighty, and wonderful amen. to happen to Brooklyn in amen. Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. <laughs> Yeah. I said I felt just I just felt this all over me. It was just I know the 
faith just seems to rise up because I said, when them kids, they're so pure and hard. Yes, hallelujah. Are, you know, their prayers are so true. And I said, them kids can move God. Yes, they, they can. They can touch God in a way by that that he can move upon her, you know. And I was so thankful of that today. And I wanted to just let you know. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, let the little children come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Their angels always behold the face of the Father. Bless the Lord. You want somebody praying for you? Get a little kid filled with the Holy Spirit laying hands on you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord forevermore. I remember last year, year before last in uh, preschool, or, or, or uh, I think it was preschool, one of the kids there, their cat or dog or something was sick, and they wanted prayer for it, and, and uh God touched that little that cat or dog. I can't remember offhand. Bless the Lord and and all those kids begin to pray and, and intercede. Praise God. Can God really do such a thing? I believe He can. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. But understand something. When Jesus Christ is present, it's not hard to praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? It's not hard to give Him worship. It's not hard to give Him praise. Matter of fact, that's when we come to a service. You know, it's ordained. A worship service. Well, I'm going to worship service. Bless the Lord. There's all different types of worship. Hear me. As you come into the house of God, reading the word of God is worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Then there's, there's worship in music and song. And most of the music and song, listen, it brings forth a message. And that message ought to sink deep into the heart where it makes you want to worship and praise God as well. Hallelujah. You see, when they bring forth a song with a message from the Word, look at me, bless God, it doesn't entertain the flesh, but it entertains the Spirit in the inside of you, that born-again Spirit. Praise the Lord forevermore and evermore. We're not here to entertain flesh. Amen. We're here to crucify flesh. Flesh has got to be crucified with Christ. Hear me, there's got to be less of me and more of him in us in Jesus' name. But understand, as soon as, soon as we become born again, Christ places his spirit on the inside of us and we start to be thankful right off the bat. Hallelujah. Some things start coming your direction. You might hit your hand with a hammer instead of, instead of flying off with all different types of cuss words, throwing the hammers or what have you. You're praising God. You say, praise God, hallelujah, to the Lamb. And you go, man, where'd that come from? Where'd that come from? I know I'm a, I'm a new person because I know something else would have come out of my mouth other than praise God. Are you hearing me? But can I tell you something? If we'll let go and let God, let the Spirit move us, hallelujah, He'll control every word that comes out of our mouth in the name of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. As you look at 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, Paul says this, listen to what he says. He says, what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? I'll give you a little time to get there. I see people flipping their... Their, their, their Bible pages. 1 Corinthians six nineteen through 20. Hallelujah. Everybody there, wave your hand at me. Go like this. There we go. Paul says, what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Let me ask you a question. Does God live in this church? No. He don't live in this church. Hear me. Hallelujah. This church is, it's dedicated to the worship of God Almighty. But God don't live in this church. Hallelujah. According to what Paul's saying, he said, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? That holy of holies that Amber was talking about dwells on the inside of you and dwells on the inside of me, which is in you, which you have of God and you are not your own. For you are bought with a price. What was that price? The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Therefore, help me, glorify God in your body and spirit. Hallelujah. Look at this. Two areas. Listen. Glorify Him in your body. Let your body be an instrument of praise and thanksgivings unto Him. Bless the Lord. Why? Because we house the Holy Spirit. 
Some would say, you know, well, I just got trouble with my body praising God. Hallelujah. And, and our body really don't mean that much. Oh, yeah, Paul said, I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. Hallelujah. We're to be controlled by the Spirit of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So listen, how, uh, we're, to, we're to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through our body in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So when we come into the house of God, look at me, not just Sunday morning that we mouth something to the Lord, thank you Jesus and praise you Jesus, but all through the week you've been praising God. All through the week you've been glorifying Him. All through the week you've been seeking His face. All through the week you've been reading and meditating in the Scriptures. And when you come into the house of God on Sunday, you don't need no hype. All you got to do is lift up your hands and just start glorifying Him and out of your belly starts flowing rivers of living water in the name of the Lord. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're to allow God through the power of the Holy Spirit to take complete control and actions of our body in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. And in your spirit, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Now, I want us to look at something here in your spirit. In John 4, 23 through 24, flip over there. John 4, 23 through 24. This, remember, this is the scripture where, where the woman was at the well. And she was chiding with Jesus and saying, you know, uh, we Samaritans, we worship in this mountain. You Jews say we got to worship in that mountain. And Jesus comes back and tells her this, these words. Hallelujah. Let's read it together if we would please, the 23rd and 24th verse. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Now look what it says. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now look at me. Inside of you, look, look, hear me. Inside of you, there is two spirits. You've got your newborn again spirit, and you've got the Holy Spirit abiding on the inside. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah to the Lamb. We're to glorify God in our spirit because God looks for such to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Now, what is truth? God's Word is truth. Say that with me. God's Word is truth. One more time. God's Word is truth. So, if we don't understand the Word of God... We don't know the Word of God. It's, it's going to be difficult to worship in spirit and in truth. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. We've got to have the Word inside of us, building us, encouraging us to bring forth that spontaneous worship unto Him. Hallelujah. How would I have ever known that God loved me except I read John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. When I read it, I read it like this. For God so loved Terry Martin that he gave his only begotten son. And I say, thank you, Jesus, a billion times over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? That didn't come out of me, look at me, when I, before I was ever saved. None of that come out of me before I was ever saved. But now that I'm saved, look at me, it comes out of my mouth constantly and continuously. There's a continuous praise in my heart and upon my lips. Listen, when we leave the church... Hear me? When we go home, when we're on our job, wherever you're at, there's a continuous song, there's a continued praise in our hearts and in our lives. Bless the Lord. Look at Ephesians, if you would, please, just a second here. See if I can find it. Ephesians. Let's see. Yeah, Ephesians 5, 18. Ephesians 5, 18. Look what it says here. Paul speaking to the church at Ephesus. 
He says, and be not drunk with wine wherein it is excess. The emphasis here is on the Spirit. Understand that. But be filled with the Spirit. Say that with me. But be filled with the Spirit. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. What? Here's some of the signs to show you that you're filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something? You can even praise God in the most difficult times of your life. You know why? Because it's not you, it's the Spirit in you bringing forth that sacrifice of praise unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Matter of fact, anybody, as I said, can praise God if things are going smooth. You take, look, at, look at the apostle Paul. Paul and Silas look at when they was cast into jail in stocks and bonds. And, and, and uh, they was beaten. They had stripes laid across their back for preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says at midnight they began to sing and praise God. Where was they doing that? They was doing it in jail in stocks and bonds. I don't know about you, but look at me. That wouldn't be a comfortable place to praise the Lord. Sometimes we can't praise God if we don't have a padded pew or we don't have no air conditioning. Are you hearing me? It's too uncomfortable. But understand me. Hear me, child of God. Bless the Lord. God looks for those to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Paul said, I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. No matter what the the circumstances, the stocks, the bonds, his back ripped wide open, he begins to praise God and glorify God, and guess what happens? The jailhouse began to rock in the name of the Lord. Hear me, child of God. God wants to rock this church. Are you hearing me? He wants to shake this church up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to where we offer up a sacrifice of praise. I don't need a goose bump on my back. I don't need a goose bump on my arm to lift my hands and glorify Him and praise Him. The Bible says, Praise the Lord, all ye people. Praise His holy name. Lift up your voice in the sanctuary and give Him thanksgiving at all times. I don't need, listen, a goose bump to come over me to do that. Hear me? Everybody say sacrifice. Sacrifice. One more time. I don't believe Isaac was happy about being a sacrifice. Sometimes you've got to sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgivings unto the Lord. Your feeler will catch up sooner or later. Are you hearing me? But understand me, bless God, I don't have to be told 15 million times to lift up my hands and worship the Lord. I don't have to have Pastor Martin tell me to glorify God. Hallelujah, I've got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me that tells me to lift up holy hands without wrath or without dissension and glorify His holy name. Hallelujah to the Lamb forevermore. Praise the Lord. You see, it's all the Spirit of God. The only thing that, that's the true worship that God receives. He doesn't receive anything other than those that worship in spirit and in truth. Are you hearing me, folk? Some of this rot gut that's going on in television, television hear me. And part the, the crude expression, but that's what it is. It's nothing but entertainment. Are you hearing me? Nothing but entertaining the flesh. You can see the same thing on, in Hollywood. Stop and think of this a second. Can I tell you something? God don't accept such stuff. You know why? Because it's coming out of the flesh of man. Hallelujah. He, he accepts what comes out of our spirit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb forevermore and evermore. Yes, many times you've got to sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord. That simply means that, hey, I really don't feel like praising God today, but I'm going to do it because I'm told in Scripture to do it. 
You see, if you don't know the scripture, you won't do it. On, Hear me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And some people say, well, I just don't get excited in the things of the Lord. Well, you know, bless God. But I know one thing, I certainly do get excited, bless the Lord. When I see people come to the altar and get saved, I've told many, I feel like I just got saved over because I know, listen, the bonds and the bondages that are being broken and severed off of their lives, I don't know about you, but that gives me great joy and pleasure to glorify my King. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. And folk, I believe without a shadow of a doubt, this ought not to be a quiet church. Shh. I don't want you to get too happy. You're liable to offend somebody. Don't you realize that we just don't do that in this church? Well, can I tell you something? I'll outshout you. I said, I'll shout. If God tells me to shout, I'm going to shout. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. If he tells me to dance, I'm going to dance. Bless God. If he tells me to lift my hands, I'm going to lift my hands in praise and glorifications unto him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If he tells me to take out my hanky and wave it back and forth as a wave offering to the Lord, I'm going to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You know, there's times, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be praying doing this number. And I thought, Lord, why in the world am I always doing that? Going back and forth. You know what? The Bible says that in the, in the heart of man, the, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That candle, if you'll watch the flame on the candle, it'll go like this. Back and forth, back and forth, burning. Hear me. And what it is, hear me, child of God, hallelujah, it's a sweet smell. I don't know about you, but some candles I like to smell. It's a sweet smell in the nostrils of the Lord. In other words, hear me, it's a wave offering to God. In the Old Testament, they had a wave offering. They had heave offerings that they would throw up into the air. Hear me. Hallelujah. Look at me. Our whole body can be a weapon of praise and worship and glorification to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Satan don't want this church to worship God. He wants to keep it quiet. But can I tell you something? Hallelujah. Those that know their God shall be strong and shake off heavy bands and lift up holy hands and begin to praise God and glorify Him despite circumstances, despite situations that they might go through in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why? Because it's not you. It's the Holy Spirit in you that's doing this. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I love to sing in the shower. I don't know why, but it just seems like when you're in the shower, you get a lot of uh, revives or reverberation in the shower stall. And uh, I just, you know, you sit in there and you just, a song will start coming to your, your, into your heart and you say, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord. For giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. I can go through the shopping center and God, through the power of the Spirit, begin to bring a song forth or, or, or a praise forth inside of you. Are you hearing me? I mean, I don't have a Pentecostal hold down in Walmart, but understand me, hear me. They'd probably throw you in a rubber room someplace. But hear me, bless God, there's sometimes I just say, thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we praise you, we honor. How many know, how many's ever had those seasons before? And all of a, you know, you might be going through there and all of a sudden, maybe, maybe in your car, your song comes to you and and man, it just touches your soul and you just start worshiping the Lord and tears start streaming down your eyes and people look at you like, oh, they're going through so much hardship. But it's tears of joy and worship unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. There's times I go down with my motorcycle, listen to the music on my motorcycle, but you can't take off both hands on that motorcycle. Are you hearing me? And say, oh, praise God. But I can still worship Him in spirit 
and in truth. I can, I, I don't know, I can kick my, my feet up and lay back on that bike and just let that air flow through my hair in the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And just say, thank you, Lord. Man, what a beautiful day out today. I thank you, God, that you have made me to take pleasure in this day and give you pleasure and great pleasure and great honor it is for me to give you that, ple- that, that honor and praise and glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You see, it's just something that comes natural in Jesus' name. That's why I say, you know, there's hundreds and thousands and millions of people that sit in church today, open up their hymnal, and they'll sing something in a hymn. Hear me. But you know what? All it is is a song to them. It's a song. They go through a religious routine. Understand me. Hallelujah. He's more than just a song. Hear me. He's more than just a dance. Bless God. He's everything to me. He's everything to you. He's my divider. He's my savior. Or he's my deliverer. He's my sanctifier. Bless God. He's the rock of my salvation. Who is a rock? Save God. Our Lord in Him will I trust. In Him will I give praise and glorifications in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That's why I, you know, sometimes I can't understand why people won't praise the Lord. You know, you, you think in your mind, why, you know, they're saved. Why in the world don't people praise God? Amen. Hallelujah, especially during worship service where the Spirit is very present. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. And folk, bless God, if we can't do it in church, we'll never do it outside the church. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Lord, the Lord has placed a boldness within us in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to where I don't care what people think of me. You know, I'm way over that stage. Bless the Lord. I don't care what people, if I'm lifting my hands, look at me. I'm not looking around seeing if, is Matt looking at me over there? Matt, are you watching me praise God? I'm not doing that. No. I'm not doing it to impress people. That's right. I'm not looking around saying, boy, he's spiritual. Look, they're looking at me. You know, if that's the case, you're not worshiping in spirit. You're worshiping to get people's attention. And that ought not to be. Hear me, child of God. Hallelujah. We do it to please Him in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Can you imagine every one of us coming into the house of God, filled with the Spirit of the Lord, God being on us, hallelujah, all in one accord, one purpose, one mind, one thought, in all praise and thanksgivings and worships unto him, I believe God would shake the place in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. God would shake the place. But why is it on Sunday morning, that's when the fights start coming, that's when the kids start hollering and screaming, that's when the cars don't start, something happens at home, what happens, you know why that is? It's because the devil don't want you to get happy. He don't want you to get happy. He don't want you to stay happy. He wants you to be miserable. But can I tell you something? Despite what you go through, hallelujah, lift up those holy hands and glorify Him anyhow. Praise and worship can become an offensive weapon against the powers and principalities of hell. If the devil can silence the church folk, he'll do it. He'll do it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But can I tell you something? Bless God, I'm, I, I will continually, and I say this by the grace and the mercy of the Lord, I will continuously praise Him with everything that I've got in the name of Jesus. In Hosea 10, 11 through 12, it says this, Hosea 10, 11 and 12, it says, And Ephraim is as an heifer that is taught, and loveth to tread out the corn. But I passed over upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride. Judah shall plow, and Jacob shall break up, break his clods. So to yourselves in righteousness. Listen to what the Word of God, what the Holy Spirit's saying. So to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, 
Break up your fallowed ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Boy, you know what? That speaks volumes to me. You know why? Because Judah and Israel was in such a backslidden condition, hear me, child of God, and their heart was so hard that the word couldn't penetrate them. Hallelujah. And, and Hosea is prophesying by the Spirit of God Almighty. He said that Judah shall plow and Jacob shall break his clots. So to yourself in righteousness. Everybody say righteousness. Which simply means right standing with God. Hallelujah. Reap in mercy. Break up your followed ground. For it's time to help me seek the Lord. What? Sunday morning. Sunday morning, no, till he comes and rains down righteousness upon the house of God in the name of the Lord. I'm waiting for people to say, hey, I ain't leaving until you bless me, Lord. I'm not getting out of here until you bless me. I'm not getting out of here till I know the presence of God is consuming my heart and my life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Two things I want us to look at. Number one, break up your followed ground. Break up your followed ground. Judah shall plow. How many realize that before the farmer sows seed, look at me, he makes preparation on the ground. Of course, nowadays, they, they, they don't plow their fields anymore. I mean, they just drill in what they want to drill in. Hallelujah. But the farmer, he makes preparation to break up the hard ground, especially here in Paulding County. I've always heard that you couldn't raise an umbrella in Paulding County soil. But you know, that's not true. Hear me. With, with uh, the anhydrous and all the, the, the things that they put on crops now, I think you could grow a crop out on that blacktop. But understand something. Hallelujah. The farmer prepares his soil. Why does he prepare that soil? To break up that ground. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Without the breaking up of that ground, look at me, that soil, the seed cannot be planted. All that happens is the seed is dropped on, on, the, on the top of the soil, which brings us to the parable of the, of the sower, uh, uh, of the sown word, or the, I, I like to look at it as the preparation of soils. Hallelujah. Some fell on good ground. Some fell on stony places. Some fell on thistles and thorns. Are you hearing me? Hear me, child of God. Some that last for a season, those that, that, that fall on stony ground, they last for a season, for a little bit, and the birds of the air, the fowls of the air, come down and steal the word off of their heart. Hear me. Hallelujah. Those that... That, that so amongst thorns, they, they hang around for quite some time, and thistles hang around for quite some time, but the cares of this life begin to put a chokehold on their spiritual life, and they die out. Are you hearing me? We've got to watch, hear me, and make sure that our soil is good soil and good ground to receive the engrafted word of God which is able to save our souls in Jesus' name. Now understand something. Jacob will plow Judah. Hallelujah. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Jacob, uh, break up your followed ground. Judah shall plow. Judah simply means praise. Everybody say praise. Praise, praise will break up. It's like the plow. Are you hearing me? It will break up the ground. How important is our praise and our worship before Pastor Martin comes to, to sow the word of God? Vitally, vitally important what it does. I don't know about you, but music softens the heart. Music is a powerful instrument, folk. Hear me. Whether in the world or whether in the church, music is a powerful instrument. Hallelujah. It's been said that Satan was in charge of music in heaven because the Bible describes him as having pipes and all different types of, of instruments built inside of him. Stop and think of this a second. And he would bring worship and praise before God 
Almighty. It's no wonder you got some of this sick, lame stuff that's gone forth today. Hear me, child of God. It's, 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 it's introduced by the powers and principalities of hell itself. Some of these rock bands, hear me, some of these rappers, you listen to the music, listen to the lyrics that's behind it, it brings damnation, it brings destruction, killing, you know, your, your, your wife or, or, you know, dumping them here or treating them like a rug or this, that or the other. It's just demonic garbage is what I, I look at. And, and God help us that some of that's infiltrating the church world as well. We've got to guard that that doesn't come into the house of God. This is a holy house of God. Our body is a holy house of God for genuine worship in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If we bring forth strange fire upon the altars of God, look at me, God will consume it, but He'll consume you with it. That's what happened to, who was it? The, uh, Aaron's sons. Hear me, they was chisters and they, they were supposed to bring uh, uh, unadulterated fire upon the altars, the altar of incense, and they brought in uh, strange fire the Bible talks about. And can I tell you something? They, you know, it was a nonchalant type of, we don't care, you know, this, this is getting boring, this is dragged out, we'll just do anything we want to do. And they was drunken bums while they'd do this, they'd go into the house of God and do these things committing fornication with the women. Hear me. And they went in until one day, God let it go on so long. And one day they went in, put strange fire on the altars. And can I tell you something? They didn't come back out of the house. But God struck them dead. He consumed them. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Music has a lot to do with worship and praise unto God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord as we praise Him and glorify Him. It softens the heart to where when I begin to preach, it's easy to preach. Now some of you wouldn't realize that and understand that unless you be a preacher. But can I tell you something? If you're preaching to hard-hearted people, it's like pulling eye teeth. You might as well pack up, give three points and go on home because that's all they want. Are you hearing me? But when you got people sitting on the edge of their seat... And you know the Holy Ghost has arrested their hearts and their ears. Bless the Lord. They pull the preach right out of the preacher in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Those times are easy to preach in. Why? Because the soil's already been prepared. The soil's already been plowed. Are you hearing me, child of God? If we do our job, the preacher will do his job. Hey, that's a good word. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't have to plow the ground. We ought to have all of us plowing the ground in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. With our worship and with our praise. Breaking up the clots of hard-heartedness in Jesus' name to receive the Word of God and be filled with the power of God's Holy Spirit where we go out of here and say, Bless God. Hallelujah. I'm just full of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, I just got to do something with this power on the inside of me. Kind of like a, a Peter and John with a lame man at the temple. Silver and gold have I none. Just got filled with the Holy Ghost. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. Rise and walk in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, hear me. We're coming into an area, I believe, in this church. Hallelujah, where it, is, it will be explosive worship and praise unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Explosive, energizing, electrifying atmosphere of worship and praise to God where the spirit of the word of God digs deep into the heart in the name of the Lord. Sinners are converted unto righteousness. The saint's life is straightened out before God Almighty and God gets all glory and praise and honor and Harvestville gets no praise and honor. Pastor Martin gets no praise and honor but all praise and honor goes to the King of Kings and the Lord of lords, hallelujah to the Lamb. That's what I'm expecting in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That's what I'm looking for, a Holy Ghost tidal wave, a tsunami of His power and glory to roll over the house of God. Hear me, where there's weeping between the porch 
and the altar where there's repentance in the heart in the name of Jesus where tears are streaming down the eyes and say, God, I need you more than anything in this life. Oh, God, come and fill this hungry heart of mine in the name of the Lord. Can I tell you something? God will move all hell to reach that church in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory. That's what I'm looking for. Hallelujah. That's what God is looking for in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. He's not looking for clock watchers. Are you hearing me, child of God? He's looking for people that want to be filled. He's looking for people that want to come in contact with him, want to know him, want to love him, want to embrace him, want to praise him and glorify him. They want to manifest his glory in their life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's get back to this sowing seed. You can't sow seed on hard, crusty ground. Hallelujah. You need the ground broken up. And praise and worship does that. Hallelujah. It's not a little three-point ditty that we do that gets the job done. Can I tell you something? In Africa and in New Zealand, I never mounted the pulpit till two hours later. Those people, from the time you started, hear me, they'd be around the altar before singing ever, ever went forth. They was around the altars praising and glorifying God. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Pentecostals could come to church just 15 minutes early and stand around this altar and instead of jawing with one another and say, thank you God for such an outpouring of your Holy Spirit this morning in the hearts and lives of people. What would happen... Don't get quiet on me, please. Bless the Lord. I can't force anybody to do anything, and I don't want to force anybody to do anything. All I'm doing is suggesting. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. If we don't seek the face of God before we come to the house of God, we can't expect God to move. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. But while we're seeking Him, and glorifying Him, and praising Him. Look at me. I'm just warming up for the service. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Understand me. It's, as I said, their worship will go on for two hours. Just glorifying and praising God, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and hallelujah to the Lamb. And can I tell you something? There's not one person that's sitting there going... But the kids, the little ones, man, they're up dancing, they're up praising and glorifying God. I remember we had an old Baptist preacher with us one, one trip we were, took over to Africa and everybody was dancing and praising God and one of the brothers over in Africa went up to him and he said, what's wrong with you, brother? And he said, nothing. He said, why aren't you dancing, man? Everybody's dancing. Everybody's praising the Lord. You're sitting there with your hands folded. He didn't understand that. All he did is sit back and spectate. And you know what? We had an 18-hour flight coming back. And you know what he said? He said this. He said, you know, I don't understand you Pentecostals, but I do know one thing. What you guys got is real. What you guys got is real. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And folk, understand me. I'm not saying that we've got to stand in here for two hours and praise the Lord. Look at me. If we have to do something like that, it'll be dead, boring, stagnated. And look at me. It'll become law to us. But when the Spirit of God's moving, I said when the Spirit of God's moving, you can be in His presence for two, three hours, and it seems like three minutes in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But let us break up. Hear me the crusty ground, let us worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And everybody said, amen and amen and amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. In Hebrews thirteen fifteen, it says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. You want to beautify your lips? Hallelujah. You know what? 
Praise and thanksgiving is a fruit. It's the fruit of the lips. What's in the heart will come out of the mouth. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Giving thanksgiving continually unto the Lord, which is the fruit of my lips in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. You know the reason why some people, listen, some people are just blessed beyond measure. Some people are just lost in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And some people aren't. Some people, you know, they're just, their minds wandering here and wandering there. Bless God what they're going to have for supper or dinner and where they're going to eat lunch or, or what have you. All different things running through their minds. Bless the Lord. Hear me. Some people just automatically, they just start praising God. Other people, they don't do it at all. Hear me. There's a couple reasons why people won't praise the Lord. Number one, they're held in captivity or bondage and can't praise God. Number two, they're too lazy to plow the ground. <laughs> Can I say that again? They're too lazy to plow the ground. They want somebody to plow it for them. Hear me, folk. Hallelujah. Proverbs 24 says, The sluggard does not plow after the autumn, so he begs during the harvest and has nothing. I'm telling you how important is our worship and praise to God. We can see right through there, right, right in that scripture itself. Hear me. The lazy person, lazy towards the things of the Lord, look at me, they'll always be in want. But those that have plowed the ground, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It's no wonder Satan wants to keep the church silent. Hear me. He wants to keep the heart crusted to where you don't hear the word of God, even though you're sitting in church. He don't want you to hear. Jesus said, he that hath ears, let him hear what the Spirit of God says. I like 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, where Jehoshaphat was outnumbered. What was it? Three to one. The Ar Armorites and uh, all different types of Hittites, whatever ites was coming against him. Hear me. And he got report that they was coming out against him. This army was to destroy him. And you know what he did? First thing he did, he called a solemn fast. And everyone, the children, all of them, come at, uh, and, and begin to seek the face of God Almighty. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And as they sought the face of God, the Spirit of God came upon Jehazel, Jeha Jeha I believe it was, a young man. And he began to prophesy, and he said, Fear not, for the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, tomorrow go out against the enemy. They're coming up by the way of the cliff Ziz. I look at that word Ziz, it means blossom. God said, I'll cause you to blossom right there where the enemy's at. Amen. Oh God, what a, what a message there. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. As they go out to the enemy, understand me, the Lord says this through the power of the Holy Spirit Bless God, he said, I want your best singers out in front of you, and I want you to sing praises and holiness unto the Lord your God. He didn't call for his best swordsmen. He didn't call for his best archers. Are you hearing me, child of God? But he called for the praisers. He called for the singers. Are you hearing me? To go out in front of the army and praise the Lord and his beauty and his holiness. And the Bible says that, he, that the Lord calls confusion against the enemy to where they turned on each other and destroyed each other. The very thing that came out, hear me, to destroy them, God used that very thing to bless them mightily. 
let us hear the conclusion of the matter. They went out for two days and gathered the spoil of the enemy. Are you hearing me? Bless the Lord forevermore and evermore. The very thing that might look like it's going to take you down will be the very thing that will end up blessing you in the name of Jesus. You might as well give God praise and glory right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might as well glorify him and magnify him no matter what the conditions. Bless God. Hallelujah. You might be outnumbered, listen, three to one, but bless God, there's more for us than against us. Hallelujah. All God's requiring of you is to sing a praise and a worship song unto him. Hallelujah. All he's requiring of you is to sing a praise of, uh, of glorification and thanksgiving to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It sets ambushments against the powers and principalities of hell. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil say it, it's not going to help you any way you want to praise God. Look at you. God's not listening to you. Everything's falling apart. But the Lord says, stand still and see my salvation. See if I not fight for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Folk, it's vitally important. Hallelujah. That the church be a praising and a worshiping church in the name of the Lord. Vitally important that the word of God be able to drop into the heart and the life of God's people to transform them and renew them in their thinking in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Look at me. I'm just going to praise him. I said, I'm just going to praise him. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm going to praise him when the sun comes up. I'm going to praise him when the sun goes down. I'm going to praise him when I lay my head on my pillow at night. There's times we go to bed and I just say, I say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for giving me another wonderful day before I go to sleep. There's times I'll start praying in the spirit before I go to sleep. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. I like what Judy said the other, day, other Sunday, I believe it was. She said that, you know, pray for her husband, Danny. She said a lot of times I rub, it, rub his head before he goes to bed at night. He don't know, but he said, I'm praying for him. <laughs> Good move. <laughs> Good move. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Better not show this on YouTube. <laughs> he might be watching it. Bless the Lord. But what a way to worship the Lord. Amen. God, just, just save his soul in the name of the Lord Jesus. And you can do that under your breath. Praise God. And God hears those prayers in Jesus' name. But folk, listen. Hallelujah. When people give their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ, this church ought to erupt in praise. They ought to just glorify him, clapping their hands and shouting praises to God in the name of Jesus. You know what? You just pulled one sinner out of the clutches of hell fire itself. Stop and think of that. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I'm going to close. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless God. But let, let us not let the enemy keep us quiet for such a time as this. In the name of the Lord. Let us purpose in our hearts and in our souls. I'm going to praise him through the week. And I'm coming into the house of God with an everlasting song on my heart and in my life in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm going to glorify him and I'm going to praise him in Jesus' name. And can I ask this of the congregation? Will you pray at least five minutes before the service? Before you leave your house, pray God, hallelujah, move on the service today in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, God moves on the grounds of prayer. And when people begin to intercede, things begin to happen in the name of the Lord Jesus. And everybody said, amen and amen. Hallelujah. How many is happy in the Lord? Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Give him a hand clap of praise tonight. Glory to God. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. So when you find yourself whatever, wherever you're at, whether you're in the shopping center or wherever, and all of a sudden that song comes up in your heart. Tears start streaming down your eyes. Just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for being on board in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you never did that before you was ever saved. What an awesome God we serve, folk. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Enoch, close us in prayer, would you, brother?
your Holy Spirit, Lord, throughout our